Step aside, Joe Rogan. There's a new podcast in town. You know, I think we need to stop complaining about the housing crisis and just embrace our new lives living under a bridge. And these days, everyone's starting a podcast, so why not start a podcast under a bridge? You can get portable broadcast quality audio on a Raspberry Pi 4. It even works with headphones, so you can monitor what you're recording. The setup consists of a Raspberry Pi 4 running Ubuntu Linux, a Yamaha AG06 audio mixer, two USB power banks. The data for the audio mixer goes over a USB 3 cable. The power for the USB 4 goes over a USB A to USB C cable. It's critical that the resistance of this USB cable is very low, since the Raspberry Pi 4 takes a lot of current, and you don't want to get current sags that will shut it off. The audio mixer also requires its own power supply as well, which is supplied over a USB A to micro cable. So let's go through a few of my rough notes that describe how to actually achieve this setup. So before I go through these steps, I'll talk a bit more about what you can actually do with this setup and why you might want to do it. So because you have the audio mixer hooked right up to the Raspberry Pi, this means you can do a whole bunch of extra edge processing, and maybe even control something else from the Raspberry Pi that's triggered by sound. You can also use the more advanced features of your preamp directly in the field. For example, you could add audio effects like this. It also gives you more raw control of the audio that you record, and allows you to bypass features like automatic gain control that are usually helpful but sometimes distort the audio in undesired ways. Depending on your preamp, this would also let you record multiple input sources. You could even record multiple instruments at once. This way you can record jam sessions under the bridge as well. The audio data is stored on a USB flash drive in WAV format. So to create the Raspberry Pi image, I use the RPI imager command on a separate Ubuntu machine, and the install image for the Raspberry Pi was Ubuntu 22 server. And in case you didn't know, you can install Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi. The next thing I did was set up the USB flash drive, which is actually going to have the audio data stored on it. So this command just zeroes out the USB flash drive, and then I used the parted command to format the flash drive. Then I used lsblk to find the partition that I just created. Then I formatted that partition with fat, and then I gave it a label. Next I created a top level folder where I'm going to mount that partition and store the wave data. Then I used this command to find out how to identify that partition. And of course I did that so I can set up the fstab file. This way as soon as the Pi turns on it will automatically mount that partition. Next I installed also utils. This gives me the a record command and the a play command. So you can run a play l, and this will list out the devices. And I actually cannot demonstrate what the output looks like when the audio mixer is plugged in because I'm using the audio mixer right now to record this on my computer. But if I did have it plugged in, I would see some entries for AG06. So next I take this bash script and I put it at this location. And I also made this quick little Python script to blink one of the LEDs so that way I could actually verify whether it was recording or not. So this way if the A record process dies then uh, I'm not going to stand there for hours speaking into the microphone and uh, not recording anything. And for those two scripts I used this cron job. And here's a more clear look at those cron jobs. This is a very sloppy way to set up this cron job but this is just a throwaway project. And here's an example of some of the audio files that get recorded. In practice I've done recording sessions that are as much as one and a half or two hours. In my case the limiting factor actually seems to be the amount of power in the power bank for powering the Raspberry Pi. I've also seen that if you record for say over an hour or so the A record can Command will split large WAV files into multiple files, but in those cases it seems like all the audio data is still there. If you power off the Raspberry Pi or the battery dies suddenly, the audio data is mostly not lost. In my experience it usually records up to the last few seconds. Another few interesting notes are, I tried this on a Raspberry Pi 3 and I couldn't get it to work. This preamp claims that the connection is USB 2.0, but I tried it with 2.0 and it doesn't work, and it seems to require USB 3. If you want, you could also use a USB modem directly plugged into the Pi. This would allow you to stream your podcast from under the bridge directly to the internet. I haven't tried this yet, but if you plug the preamp into a USB power bank, you might be able to connect it to certain cell phones and use it as a selectable microphone source. This way, you could avoid the Raspberry Pi entirely, but then you no longer have a hook to do any fancy edge processing. To illustrate why podcasting under a bridge is so challenging, here's a comparison that illustrates the difference in audio quality that's picked up by my camera versus the one that was picked up by my condenser microphone. The A record command is my favorite Linux command.